Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Well, we've been looking at this, the, the, the subject of a good heart and how important it is that we need to have a, a good heart speaking about having the character of Christ. And when we become born again children of God, we now have the character of Christ within us. Um, as a child of God, you become a partaker of the divine, say it me, divine, 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 which means godly nature of God. In other words, you become like God. You act, you speak like God. And we saw the measure for that in Galatians chapter 5 and 22 where it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the life of, of, of a Christian. We have the ability to love. We have the ability to be patient. We have the ability to sow of ourselves, to give of ourselves, and, 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 and to, to walk in what God wants us to wants us to do. The only way you can do that is through the supernatural power of God. So because it's divine, you cannot do it out of yourself. When you try to be a good person and you try to change your behavior, you're going to fail. You're going to get stressed out. You're going to get tired. And then you're going to be guilt-ridden and feel condemned. But when you get to God, you allow Him to be God of your life. You live a divine life. You live a godly life. You live a life that is powered by the grace, the love, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why it's so important that we as children of God then live by the power of God. And that's our message that we're going to look at today. Um, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18, he prays that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. In other words, that you have a revelation, mentions a few things, but one of the things he speaks about having a revelation of is verse 19. And he prays that you might know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards those who believe. The exceeding greatness of his power. The what? The exceeding greatness of his power. We need a revelation of what? The exceeding greatness of his power. We need a revelation of what? The exceeding greatness of his power. Listen to, the, listen to this. To those who? To believe. So when you believe and you have faith, he says you have access to this exceeding greatness, the greatness of his power. He says, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Jesus when he raised him from the dead, seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. And verse 21 says, far above all principality, all power, all might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the age to come. Every name that is named. Many of us, we've got issues and we've named our issues. You've given it, it's become such a part of your life, it's got a name. Whatever it might be, whatever you call it, whatever you call it, it's got a name. But the Bible says here, he says that it's a name that is far above every name that has been named. Come on, somebody. Jesus is bigger than your issue. Jesus is bigger than your problem. Might it be stress, might it be fear, might it be abuse, might it be hurt, might it be pain, whatever it might be, whatever it's been named, Jesus is a far greater name. Can I get a big amen there? So therefore, he says, we have that power. We need a revelation of that power. You cannot live without that power. And I, I, I like the word that Paul uses. In the Greek, when he speaks about the word power, it's the Greek word megathos. Megathos. A nuclear bomb is measured in megatons. So when we talk about mega, Paul goes even one better. And when he says exceeding, 
he says that we measure, uh, when we measure, he speaks about a great megathos or a super megathos or a hyper megathos. In other words, a super greatness. So it's not just power, it's mega power. Shout it out. Say it me, mega power. Mega power. Shout it out. Say again, mega power. Mega power. And that's the hashtag for today's message as well. Mega power. Say with me, I have the mega power of God upon my life. I have his mega power at my disposal to be who God has called me to be. Can I get a big amen there? Shout it out. Say mega power. So we have that available. And therefore, you've got to understand the divine nature that we're talking about is not just supernatural, but it is miraculous. It transcends all. Where the presence of God is, expect light and life and excellence. He makes the mountains low, the valleys high, and he makes the crooked ways straight. Isaiah 40 verse 4. Can I get a big amen there? He makes the mountains low. He makes the valleys high. He makes the crooked ways straight. Hallelujah. See, that's what happens in your life. And you have settled for the mountain. You have settled for the valley. And you have settled for crooked. Tell your neighbor, no more crooked here. No more crooked. No more state capture. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, no more any capture. Can I get a big amen there? Are you hearing me here today? No, no. God is in control. It's the power of God. Now look at... Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16 and verse 9, when Jesus was raised from the dead, he appeared to Mary Magdalene, of whom he cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. So she's telling them she met Jesus. Yeah, they're crying and they're all emotional. Verse 11. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. They did not believe. believe. They were emotional. Emotion is not faith. They were emotional but did not believe. They mourned and wept and cried, but they did not believe. Verse 12, after that he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. Verse 13, and they went and told it to the rest. They did not believe them either. Two witnesses. So the first told them they did not believe, and then the next came, and they did not believe them either twice. So what happened is Jesus had to, he had to uh, appear to them in verse 14. And it says there, later he appeared to the 11. 11 is the number of unbelief. They weren't 12. (laughs) Hello, somebody. There's a message in there somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask your neighbor, do you have your 12? Hallelujah. Okay. See, he had to appear. He he appeared to those who had 11. Come on, somebody. In faith, you have 12. Can I get a big amen there? And he rebuked their unbelief. And he rebuked the hardness of heart. Two things he rebukes. First of all, he rebukes the unbelief. The second thing that he rebukes is the hardness of heart. In other words, the unwillingness to believe. They had two places where they could believe. So they, they were not believing once, not believing twice. So he doesn't just address the fact that they do not believe. He addresses the hardness, the unwillingness within their heart to believe. So you can have unbelief and you can have a hardness of heart. He rebukes them. And then after he rebukes them, in verse 15, he says to them, he gives a, he, he commissions an unbelieving, hardened bunch of people. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's hope for you. (laughs) Amen. He gives them purpose. 
He tells them what to do. So a bunch of unbelievers with a heart and hearts rebukes them. And then he says, what does he say? He says, now, you bunch of hardened hearts, unbelievers. He says, now go into all the world and do what? Preach the gospel to every creature. Go, he says. And he says, and he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And then in verse 17, he says, and these signs will follow those who believe. believe. So these signs will follow those who are already operating in the supernatural. So there's faith, there's happening within their lives. You see, you're already operating in Christ by being obedient. There's already a move of the supernatural within your life to go because you won't go if you don't love. Are you hearing me? You won't obey if you don't believe. So already in the going, that's character, that's doing. There's a, a supernatural power on your life to go, to love, to make a difference. Now he says, signs will follow those who go. So it's not just the power to go. God says now it's the double power. It's the mega power. Come on, somebody. It's the second power. Now there's signs that follow those who believe. He says, and these signs will follow. In my name they will cast out demons. Hallelujah. Not cast out people. Some people, we call them the demons. Hallelujah. They will cast out demons. Your, your, your house, your neighborhood, wherever you are, taking authority. Cast out demons. And the Bible says, and they will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So in other words, if things like this happen along your way, and as you go out to preach the gospel, the Bible says, now the supernatural will follow you. There will be miraculous signs that follow you as you operate in the supernatural power of God. Can I get a big amen there? Yes. And then verse, uh, verse 20 of Mark 16, it says, and they went out and preached everywhere. They went out. They were obedient, preached everywhere, and the Lord working with them. The Lord worked with them. The Lord worked with them. Who wants God to work with them? Okay? If you want God to work with you, you need to work. Are you hearing me? God works with those who work. He works with the workers. So you've got to understand the calling of your life. Where God has placed you, God has called you. As a parent, as a mother, as a father, as a, as a spouse, in your neighborhood, where you are in your workplace, where God has placed you. He's called you to be a representative of the power of God, of the love of God. So where he has called you, God has placed you. In your workplace, in your class, wherever you are. And, 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 and God will work with you as you're working for him. Can I get a big amen there? So... They, the Lord worked with them, confirming the word through accompanying signs. And then the question is, what happened then between 14, verse 14 and 20? Between the unbelief, hard-hearted people, and then them going out and God moving and working with them. Well, what happened? Well, Acts chapter 1, verse 8 happened. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, but you shall receive power. You shall receive what? Power. power. Do not miss. You shall receive what? power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be what? My witnesses. So we receive the power of God for what? To be a witness that God is alive. First hand witness that there is a living God. Hallelujah. Where people look at you and say, no, out of yourself, you cannot do this. What do you have? What do you have? Amen. So you when we receive the power of God, now you become a witness. So the power is the essence of the Christian witness. Christianity is either supernatural or nothing at all. 
You cannot live a life without Christ. You cannot live a life without the supernatural where God comes and put his super, his power, his super on your natural. Now you operate as supernatural. You now become super mom. You now become super dad. You now become super husband, super wife. Can I get a big amen there? You become super in your finances. You become super in your workplace. You become a super citizen of this nation, of this continent. Come on, somebody. See, when God gets hold of you, he takes you to a new level. Hallelujah. So he, it's just a supernatural work of God. Therefore, we live a supernatural life. Why? Because we have a supernatural Jesus. Because we have a supernatural church. Because we have a supernatural ministry. Because we have a supernatural gospel. Because we have a supernatural Bible. Hallelujah. Take the miraculous away and you have taken Christianity's life away. The church becomes a little social club where it's just a get-together rather than a church transmitting the power of the love of God to a powerless world. We become the conductors of God's power. So therefore, when, when faith and witness or when faith and purpose combine, that equals power. Say with me, faith, faith. plus purpose, plus purpose. Equals, power. equals power. Say with me, faith, faith. plus purpose, plus purpose. Equals, mega power. equals mega power. Say it again, say with me, faith, faith. plus purpose, plus purpose. Equals, mega equals mega power. Mega thoughts, hallelujah. Yes. So you gotta have purpose. You gotta know why you're alive. And walking within the purpose of God, then empowered by God and have faith, we understand now we have purpose because Paul says in Romans chapter 1, 6, he says, and that's why I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because, he's, because it is the power of God to salvation for those who, who believe. For everyone who believes. And therefore, when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will always act when you act for God. I said the Holy Spirit will always act when you act for God. If you don't work for God, you don't need power. You see, but once you baptize in the Holy Spirit, you're unstoppable. You operate and you understand that the impossible happens because God is in your life. In actual fact, in your, in your vocabulary, you don't have the word impossible anymore. Can I get a big amen there? Because all things are possible to those who believe and everything works together for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8 and verse 28. All things, that means all things. All things, that means all things. All things. God takes your mess and it becomes your message. He takes what you've gone through, the experiences, he turns it around and he makes it your sermon. Makes it your message. Makes it a testimony. All things work to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. God will turn it around. Why? Because he wants you to be a reflection of his divine nature. He wants you to be a reflection of the, 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 the love and the grace of God. But that is all that is all supernatural because you cannot love the way you need to love without God. You cannot, you cannot walk the way you need to walk without God. You cannot show mercy. You cannot be loyal. You cannot be faithful. Come on, somebody. You cannot be the way that God wants you to be without the power of God within your life. Hallelujah. So everything works to the good of those who love the Lord. Verse 29 says, because he also predestined us to be conformed to the image of of his son. That's supernatural when you receive Jesus Christ into your life. And therefore, I want to encourage you. The Holy Spirit and the gospel of Jesus' love are tied together in life. If you want to see the power of God, then you must ignore all matrix, all tricks and these manipulations and psycho-suggestions and these weird things that we're seeing in church and just preach the gospel. Just preach the whole gospel. Just preach the Bible. 
Just preach the word of God. The power is in the gospel. I said the power is in the gospel. And as you live the gospel, you preach the gospel. You know what? You'll see people's lives being touched and changed because everything we need is contained in the gospel. Salvation, forgiveness, healing, uh, peace and hope and deliverance. Everything is in the gospel. I want to close off. Matthew chapter 8 and 23. We see Jesus gets into a boat. His disciples follow him, verse 23. And suddenly there's a storm that arises. The boat is covered in waves. But the Bible says, but he was asleep. Hello. So they wake him up. <laughs> they wake him up and they start shouting, Lord, save us. We are perishing. We're dying. Don't you care? But instead of addressing this, he addresses their lack of faith. But he said to them, why are you fearful? Why are you fearful, O oh, you of little faith? Why are you fearful, O oh, ye of little faith? Now, then he arose. He rebukes the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Listen to this. Listen to this. So the men marveled, saying, how can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, I want you to see the lack of faith here. See, they marveled at the wrong thing. See, their lack of faith shows that they marveled at the signs and not at the character. You see, it's important to understand. It's the character of Christ that makes you who you are. In him we live and move and have our being. That supernatural, miraculous living. You can't live like that without the power of God out the presence of God. You need that within your life. But the disciples had a lack of faith. We see that when the storm came, what did they do? They woke Jesus up. Jesus was sleeping. You see, the miracle is not the winds that obeyed him. The miracle is the ability to sleep in the storm. He wasn't bothered about the storm. He didn't feel it was necessary. He didn't calm the storm for his sake. He calmed the storm for their sake. He rebukes them. Listen to me. He rebukes them. He says, O ye of little faith, why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? And then he rebukes the storm and still they don't get it. So they go, whoa, whoa, look what he did. That's awesome. <laughs> the wings obey him, not the character. But he's asleep in the storm. They didn't repent and say, oh, please forgive our unbelief. They didn't say, oh, Lord, change our heart because of our lack of faith. They didn't say, oh, Lord, please forgive us for for insinuating that you did not care and you did not love us. No, they were not people of faith. They were moved by signs and wonders. See, they marveled at the wrong stuff. And here's the thing. You see, you need the supernatural power of God to live a Christian life you see, but the signs will wonder, but the marvel is not at the signs. The marvel is Christ. And that's why Jesus doesn't want us to be like the signs. He wants you to be like him. That you need to learn to sleep 
in the storm. Come on, somebody. See, can you sleep in the storm? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see you haven't been sleeping. <laughs> Looks like you haven't been sleeping in a while. Hallelujah. Looks like you need some sleep. Hallelujah. Can you sleep in the storm? Because here's the thing. You might get all bent out of shape and say, Lord, help me. We are perishing. You know, we're dying as if he's going to allow you to die. So you're showing your lack of faith. You're showing the, your lack of trust in the love that God has for you. God might help you with your situation and he might calm the storm. But here's the problem. The purpose of God is not for your storms to be calmed. The purpose of God is that you develop the character of Christ. So guess what? He needs to send another storm. Because I wondered why in the Bible they went through so many storms. You read the Bible, there are many storms they went through. Are you hearing about it? This wasn't just one storm. And the reason for that is, you know what? God still, he loves you so much. He wants to teach you. He wants you to have the power to live life, the power to be mom, the power to be dad, the power to be parent, the power to live life, the power to walk life. Can I get a big amen there? He wants you to have the power that in the midst of evil, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of everything, it does not move you. You sleep at night. You're calm at night. You're in control. Can I get a big amen there? Oh, Lord, help me. We're preaching. I need a miracle. God helps you because you all bent out of shape. Miracle. But the problem is you still need another storm because you haven't learned to sleep in the storm. So we pray, Lord, take this away. Take it away. God says, no, I'm teaching you to go through it. I'm teaching you to go through it to sleep and be at rest and be at peace while you're going through it because that's supernatural living. Are you hearing me? You want to give the Lord a hand of praise for that? Yeah. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. We need the power of God within our lives. We need His power to live. We need His power in everything that we are. Supernatural peace. Supernatural joy. Supernatural love. Supernatural control. Hallelujah. Supernatural loyalty and faithfulness. We need that within our lives, Lord, that we can sleep in the midst of the storm because as you witness he says he says the signs will follow as you do his work the signs will follow but the issue is not the signs it's the going it's the trusting that you can trust God enough that you will be a witness that you have the capacity to love not just your own family but the family next door and the family across the road that you're not just trying to survive and just trying to make it and just trying to get through and just trying to make it through another day. No, but you have the capacity to go. You have the capacity to touch more than just yourself and just your own family. Amen. Now he says, when you go, signs will follow. But we need the power to go. Are you blessed this morning? Why don't you just stand to your feet just there where we are? And I want you to become aware of the presence of God in this place. We need the power of God within our lives. We need the power of God. And just there where you are, I want you to lift up your hands unto the Lord. And I want you to start calling upon the name of the Lord. I want you to start calling upon the name of the Lord. We need you in our lives, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, we need your power. We need your power. We need your power in our lives. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord. I'm desperate for you, Lord. your power in our lives Lord we need you Jesus come and call upon the name of the Lord this morning call upon the name of the Lord yes we need you Jesus 
Lord, forgive us when we've done it out of our own strength. Forgive us for trying to do things out of ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, for trying to make it happen. Forgive us, Lord, for always trying to fix things out of ourselves. Forgive us, Lord. We need you in our lives, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift up your hands unto the Lord. Just stay where you are. The Bible says, cast your burdens unto him and he will sustain you. You're trying to do this out of your own strength. You're trying to be a good person out of your own strength. You're trying to have the character of Christ without the Christ. You're trying to walk in the spirit without the spirit. And we're reacting, we're saying stuff and doing stuff without waiting and asking God to help you. you want to correct your children without asking for wisdom. You want to lead your children without asking for direction. We want to fix things and fix things and control things without getting to God and say, Lord, help us in our business, in our workplace. We need supernatural wisdom, Lord. We need supernatural power, Lord. We need supernatural direction. We need your presence in our lives, in everything that we are and everything that we do, not out of ourselves anymore, not out of ourselves. Therefore, Lord, we surrender our lives unto you. Here we are, Lord. We need you in our lives. Forgive us for doing things out of our own strength. We're distressed. we messed up, guilt-ridden, full of condemnation. And Lord, that's not your purpose for our lives. And thank you that your blood covers a multitude of sin. Thank you, Lord, that your blood cleanses us right now in the name of Jesus. Takes away all the sin. You forgive us. You cleanse us. You change us. You transform us. And thank you, Lord, you restore us and you heal us this morning. In Jesus' name, as we cast all our burdens unto you, you take control. In Jesus' name, and say with me, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. You're in control of my life. Everything that I am, I surrender unto you. Forgive me, Lord, for trying to do it out of myself. But I make a decision today to trust you. I trust you with my life. Trust you with my family, trust you with my future, trust you with my ministry. My life is in your hands, Lord. This country is in your hands, Lord. We will not fear, we will not fear, we will not doubt. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. You are our God. We trust you with our lives. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For when you need someone to stand with you, we will pray for you. SMS your prayer request to 33347. And we will pray for you for 30 days, trusting God for a miracle in your life. SMS the word pray, followed by your prayer request to 33347. And we will pray for you. It's finally here, 3C Live's third release, We Are The Light, with songs like Kingdom Come, All Through His Blood, Take My Breath Away, the light by 3c live get your copy too. this 3c live experience was brought to you by 3c media production for more information call us on 086-111-2345 or log on to my3c.tv or you could write to us at p.o box 10508 centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv 
If you need prayer, SMS the word pray followed by your prayer request to 3347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for the next 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word partner to 3347 and one of our team members will get back to you in the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bird and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more info.